Hi there, this is Joe from Shop 2, and I'm joined by Dan, but it's not the usual Dan, it's Dan from the office, so we're going to call him Second Dan. <laughs> Hello everybody. The usual Dan's gone, he's, uh, he's moving house, uh, and to be honest, we've been having terrible, terrible Skype issues this week, and today in general, and just nothing's going right, so I'm afraid this is going to be a bit of a shorter episode this week, we're just going to cut out the news completely. Uh, and because we had PlayStation VR in the office, we're just going to talk about that. And maybe I'll talk a bit about Street Fighter Fives because that was in the office today as well. So, well, it's just called this episode 11, but it's more of a short special episode. I do apologise. It's uh, like 10.5, isn't it? It's yeah. like a halfway house. We yeah. might also try and get, because you did ask us some questions, so we might try and get your questions in as well, just quickly. But like right, we say, we're recording this quite late at night. We're tired, hungry, and not had any alcohol, so we'll wait. Uh, and it's Friday, and it's so that Friday, those things are imperative. And I shouldn't be working, so we'll uh, just be a quick one. So we'll just jump straight into all the main subjects, and and at least we've got an episode this week, which is a better alternative than not having one at all. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. Right, so PlayStation VR is in the office today. Uh, I've seen it for, but not ever worn it. I've seen people playing it. I've seen this weird one actually where someone was lying on their back. Well, I've not seen that. <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> and I think I think what the game was is you actually skate you're on a skateboard or something on your back and you're going down a hill. Oh. Yeah, so sounds interesting. So uh, yeah, that sounds a bit sicky actually. Actually, saying that, I played. I got that Google Cardboard. I thought, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought it'd be a good entry point to give a good idea of what it would be like. And I was playing this roller coaster VR or something. So I'm guessing that's kind of what the line in your back one would be a bit like. You're just looking and you're going down the, you're going down the roller coaster. It's a bit weird the Google VR though, because it's, it's it can be a bit blurry sometimes. Yeah, I found that it was because I I um. I actually won on Twitter a Just Cause Google Cardboard. So I downloaded the Just Cause, the free 60 video, and used it for that. Yeah. And it, it, it worked. I just found I got double vision through it. And I don't know if that's just because it's, it's Google Cardboard. It's not hundreds of pounds worth of tech. It's, you know, like, like say, it's entry level. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not what all wide screens are in. It's only the screen you've got on your phone. So, I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not the same, I don't suppose. But, but yeah, so... VR, PlayStation VR was in. Obviously, I'm Dan from the office as opposed to normal Dan, so I was there. And, um, yeah, we went hands-on with the kitchen. So I think a lot of people have heard yeah. about it. You obviously cut the video together. You saw yeah. our reactions. Yeah, kitchen, it's just called... It's not called the kitchen. Is it not called the kitchen? No. So I went and typed all that in, my story. The kitchen, the kitchen. And then I looked at the screenshot I found and it just said kitchen oh, I'm thinking that crap now I need to go and edit everything <laughs> again to all this out but okay. I've done it I've done it eventually so it's just called kitchen but yeah it's not what I thought it was I was thinking oh yeah kitchen man I can go and make some cakes pour some flour in the <laughs> yeah, pour just some flour street. in the bowl yeah. <laughs> get the eggs out put it in the oven yeah I've made a cake but it's not yeah. is it three minutes in that kitchen was enough yeah <laughs> it was I, I I don't know how much we can and can't say, but I also don't want to spoil it for those that might get the opportunity. Um, but it's basically a horror experience, I'd say. Um, so it, it starts, you, you put the headset on, headphones on over the headsets, completely dark, you can't hear anyone around you. Um, and it starts, you're basically sat in a chair, your hands are shackled, um, and you're just in a kitchen. It's quite a grumpy, dark um, and yeah, that's it. So the hands are shackled and you're holding the dual shock. So it's almost like when you look down at your hands with the VR on, you see your hands shackled, whereas in real life they're together because they're holding the dual shock. So it's quite a good, like a, 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 like a, it tricks your brain into thinking you are shackled because you're shackled to hold this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you look around and obviously as you look, the camera moves. It's, it's, it works really well. Um, yeah, yeah, without spoiling it though, but. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's impressive. Yeah, that's what I found about Google Cardboard. What what actually impressed me about Google Cardboard is, is even though it's quite basic, when you look around, you do look around. So even in the Google Maps, you can look all around you. You can look all the way up. So I was looking at the 
and France at the Eiffel Tower and you could just look up and you would see the hole of the Eiffel Tower yeah. as you look up. I mean, even though that's quite a basic thing, it's just quite a cool experience for for just the sake of a few quid getting the Google Cardboard. So, I mean, yeah. I'd even recommend that to people just, just to get a, even though it's not perfect, just to get a little idea of what it will be like because yeah, it does like give you an stuff. idea doesn't it? Yeah. And then you can probably imagine PlayStation VR. I mean, what's the graphics like in the kitchen? Yeah, so I, I was thinking about this earlier, how to explain it, and it's probably like a cross between Murdered Soul Suspect and Until Dawn. Yeah. So there's that kind of grainy Hollywood horror film look and feel, but graphically it's quite good like Until Dawn. So the characters are very detailed that are in it, but then it's got that kind of grainy filmic kind of feel yeah. that murdered had so it's quite a nice it's quite i mean it looks great it's quite nice and stylized i don't know whether the graininess is there to add to the atmosphere or because the graphical strain that it's under it has to have that you know like the turok on the n64 had the fog for atmosphere in inverted commas but it was because the system couldn't handle it but no it it looked great and i was because i'd seen everyone else play it i knew it was going to be scary because everyone was screaming and moving and all this so i was to try and avert my eyes from what was going on L- looking at the tissues on the floor and looking at the boxes trying to like take in the detail and it mm. is really impressive like what you can see in the room it, it's not just an empty room it's you know it's a full-on room that you're sat in and you can't get away you look to your right to like not look at what's in front of you and there's stuff there it's 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 very you know it's very well I mean, done now what are the demos that are about at the moment do get quite impressive feedback like the heist which is sort of you're going robbing banks and stuff and like uh, what was the other one I'm thinking of the deep where you're underwater and the sharks coming up to your cage and stuff so I mean there's quite a few where people are going oh yeah this is this is great it's really good and, and this is just the start so it, once people get hold of it and stuff you can get the feeling it could be quite impressive I think it comes down to what developers can build into it gameplay wise though yeah because everything that's been done so far is like an experience so this one there was no you didn't really input of any buttons there's one bit where you've got to move forward to interact with something in front of you but there's no real gameplay elements it's it is an experience and i think it's going to depend quite heavily on you know getting a developer on board that's willing to include the whole package into a game yeah, but I rather think that will happen i mean especially if no man's sky's got vr that could that could be the one game that would help it take off really and no pun intended yeah so <laughs> we'll just know so we'll just need to see yeah, yeah. how what games because these i mean all we've seen so far is the sort of tech demos really haven't we and it's that apparently there's 88 games in development so i mean that's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day yeah. is I, how well they all come out, really. Yeah, see, I think from having experienced the uh, kitchen today, there might be some kind of horror or Resident Evil angle. There were, you know, there were, for me anyway, as a fan of Resident Evil, there were, there were certain things that were nods towards Resident Evil in it. Yeah. So, so it's, it's probably not. I'm probably reading far too much into something that's completely removed from it. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was like a precursor to something. How heavy is it on your head? Is it it's not heavy at all. So you no. barely know it's there? You, you know it's there because the headband's got to be, not tight, but it's got to be held on. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, I don't think after an hour's play you'd get an aching neck. It, you know, it's not, yeah, it was surprisingly light. I thought it was quite funny. If you watch a video we've got on YouTube... Uh, there's a new girl Ashley who started shop to and I thought it was quite fun there was one point she was trying to cover her eyes with a controller <laughs> no but that's because that's because though your hands in the game which are shackled by the controller oh, yeah, you move them up yeah. your hands in the game come up so she was oh, right, she so would have been to cover her, her eyes, eyes. <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny though it's I'm funny people was... um, people kick out to try and get whatever it is away from them and things yeah they yeah, you do feel like you're immersed. You forget that there's people watching you on the outside. But obviously, if you kick out, nothing would happen, would it? No, 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 because you've got no sensors on your feet. So obviously, yeah. So that. But it shows how immersive it is that people are like, "Oh, gotta, yeah, gotta kick that." It, that's why I think I think it could if they get the games right. I think it could take off this time round. I really do. Do you not remember though when you used to play 
Mario for the first time on the NES, if you ever did that, though. When you used to jump, you used to... Yeah. Well, I still control. do that now. Like, when I'm watching a football, I do that all... I do that you as well. Do that as, as like you're, you're watching a football, and when they take a throw in, you go to kick it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your foot's coming out, you try to kick it. I do that all the time. Everyone <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> Uh, right, you had to quite go Street Fighter as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I love Street be... Fighter. That was good. So I'm on the beta, like you are as well. Yeah. Although I've not had much chance to get online with it, there always seems to be issues. So it was nice to actually play an in. It was, I take it, it was installed on the PS4. It was actually an install. There was the, I think you could pick between ten or twelve characters. I can't remember ten stages. So yeah. it was quite a, a good build of it. Uh, and it, yeah, it's brilliant. And it brilliant. looks amazing. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And, and it's quite real smooth, yeah. no slowdown, great frame. It it was brilliant. It's good that there's no frame rate issues and stuff, and that it's smooth. I mean, it's out next month, end of next month. The 16th, month? I think. 16th of yeah. Feb, is it? So it's not too far away. I thought it was the 28th. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I just have a date in my head. <laughs> I, think, I think Capcom said there's going to be one more beta before it's released as well, so they might be more full on. Yeah. But so, no, it's good. And, it's definitely out next month at some point. What was great was that we all played Kitchen, but well, that's a very individual experience, so you sit there and you soak it up. But then as soon as Street Fighter came out, everyone, again, was involved. And it's like old school uh, player versus player. You know, you sat and it's winner stays on, and it was just a great multiplayer game as well. Right, okay. <laughs> that's good, sounds good. I must explain, uh, we did try and record the podcast uh, before we're recording this one, we talked for about half an hour, and then I went on to a uh, garage band and realised it hadn't bloody recorded for twenty-seven minutes. And it was the minutes. best podcast ever. I know it was the best podcast ever, and it hadn't recorded twenty-seven minutes of the half an hour we were talking. So we're kind of at the end of our tether a bit, but right, we'll just we'll just go for it. We'll try and we'll try and get some other stuff in since we've skipped the news. The news Let's do you, some questions. Do some you, questions. You know all about the news anyway, because if you need shop to news, I've written it all there. So go read it. It'll be lazy. You will listen to me talking about news for when you can read it yourself. You know what I mean? Come they on. like the news in a Scottish accent. That's what it is. Aye. That's what <laughs> it is. I'm just looking to see what the big... To be honest, there's not even really that much great news. I mean, I should mention that Swiss retailer saying that the... VR, the PlayStation VR might come out in June 30th for a price of 350 and I think we all agree it's probably going to be about that price and it'll probably yeah. be run about that time but I mean apart from that the news it's all on the website anyway we'll go back to our normal format next week and give you all the news and do our topic of the week and all that malarkey but uh, speaking of topics, we, our topic of the week this week was digital versus retail uh, I'm just going to read a few opinions here so we can fly through quick instead of just blabbing on about it. A few opinions, most of the opinions come down to this basically. Why is digital more expensive than retail? That's it. <laughs> I think that's the biggest. Yeah, yeah. What it comes people down don't, to. Yeah. Because people, I don't think, understand why when you buy physical, you get a box, a disc, possibly a manual these days printed in colour. Whereas yeah. with digital, it's straight down your internet tube into the computer or into the console so and, where's yeah. the cost and what i was saying to second down earlier is that it probably all comes down to the the retailer putting pressure on on p- people like sony and microsoft not people like sony companies like sony and microsoft to to uh, basically keep their prices high because retail is still a, the biggest market they do need places like game shop to and Amazon, whatever, they do need them to sell their hardware, to sell their games still. And all while, all while that's the case, I think we will see that retail stays cheaper than digital for now. But like I say, when, when that shrinks, when it becomes closer, 50-50, or, re- or digital even overtakes retail, you might start to see digital prices come down because demand will be there. So. Well, I wonder if people are comparing it to like the music industry, though, because you know CDs and MP3 albums are quite similarly priced, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, so they are. You can, in fact, I'd say CDs have got even cheaper. 
because digital music's so cheap now, I mean, you can buy a song for 99p, can't you? You can buy, yeah. you can buy a digital album for something silly, like 6 99 7 99 because you can stream them all now. Yeah. And I've got Spotify. What what reason have I got to buy an album? Yeah. I just don't buy albums anymore. And I've got the feeling things like PlayStation Now are going to get bigger and bigger. And then, it's the model, isn't it? The streaming model is the one that everyone will follow because yeah. it's subscription based. Yeah, I do think that's the case. I think PlayStation now, things like that's probably the future where you just go in, you pay a subscription, Netflix style. You can you just have access to all these games that you do in PlayStation now. You pick it, you play it straight away. You keep playing it until you face it, and then you just go on to the next one. That's great, though, until, like, tonight, when it goes down, like when Skype goes down, and then what do you play? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I've got my PlayStation, I paid £400 for it, and I can't do it, because oh, the infuriates me. It infuriates me when, the other night, I think PlayStation Network was down, uh, and I couldn't get into any of my digital games, they just did a walk on them. Because... But at least you've got physical games to play. Yeah. You're not locked out completely, are you? But I think what happened with me is... I've got two PlayStations, so the one one of them's the primary and one's the secondary. So if it's your primary system, you can still get into stuff. But if it's not your primary system, you can't. So yeah. I was locked out of them all because I was trying to play on the wrong PlayStation. But I think generally you can get into them, but obviously you wouldn't be able to go online. Yeah. And as more and more games go online only, you're a bit stuffed, aren't you? Yeah, so well, I don't play online-only games, so yeah, I'm I don't generally. I mean, I really like Battlefront, but apart from that, I generally a single player game yeah, person, yeah. which I quite enjoy. But yeah, to answer the sort of topic of week, which we've just skipped through, I apologise, but as I think it's just all comes down to basically retail holding uh, digital to ransom for now. But I think that will change in the future as we go on. I mean, imagine, imagine the Xbox had uh, got its way and went digital only like it wanted to. Well, do you remember the PSP Go? Yeah, and look how that flopped. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Although I did have one. I did have one, but it, it, the reason it flopped is because the retailers didn't, weren't yeah. well, particularly they had no keen reason on supporting to stock it, though, did they? Because, yeah, they weren't making software money. And they knew if they did stock it and it took off, they'd, they'd have lost out. Yeah. They'd have been the ones that lost out big time. So that's no good at all for them, is it? They don't want to lose out. Okay. Uh, a few... I thought I'd use the questions. Uh, got a few. Right, one of them was physical prices are usually cheaper than digital. Why? But we already know that, don't we? Uh, another one, our question was, uh, why is the prices on stores like PSN and Xbox Live more expensive than Steam? Now, we did answer this earlier in the Phantom non-recorded <laughs> non-recorded version of this podcast. Now, I think what I was saying then, quite right, is the reason this happens is because it's more expensive to develop for consoles, basically. There's, more, there's a higher license fee than you would get on places like PlayStation and Xbox for. On Steam, it's probably quite cheap. And like we said earlier too, all the games is developed on PC probably before they kind of then go on to do what they need to do to put them in console. But it's just for some reason PC games are always cheaper. It's just the way it's always been, isn't it? Yeah. It's always the way. It's always annoying when you see it as well. Yeah. Especially when you see a limited that you're like, oh, <laughs> limited edition's awesome, but it's yeah. £10 cheaper on PC. Yeah. Even though the PC version's probably superior. If you've got a higher yeah, yeah. spec PC, that version's superior, yet you're paying less for it. It's weird. But it just all comes down to license fee and all the marketing and all the PR and everything else they do for console games to sell them. Because, let's face it, PC gamers, PC master race. Yeah, yeah. The fact one is, listener. You've only got one PC master race listener, haven't you? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> He's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always joking. Yeah, love not. you. Um, I'm not honest. I'm joking. Uh, anyway, PC Math Race. They might, these people might think their PCs are wonderful and superior, but they're not really. 
They're just the little one percent. They're the one percenters compared to the seventy-five percenters of the PlayStation Nation. <laughs> Going down a road here, you better turn around. Yeah. Next box, Dan's not here to stop me. And, <laughs> and the Xbox Dan's is sort is. Of sitting on 25%, unfortunately, for that. It's just the way it is, actually. That was a bit of news. I saw earlier that uh, the PlayStation was selling, outselling in France, it was outselling the Xbox something silly, like 21 or something. It's even worse in Germany, it's got 100 to 1 or something. It's crazy, Spain, isn't it? Spain. Even America, UK, everywhere. I don't think the Xbox is out selling the PlayStation in one country. Xbox One country. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's not one country. I mean, when you compare that to last time round, and it makes me wonder why. And although I know one of the reasons is that Xbox's, uh, Xbox's message was a bit Next. rubbish, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But I think the reason the Xbox 360 done so well over the PlayStation 3 was there was only two reasons for that. One, the PlayStation 3 was far too expensive. Yeah. And two, it launched a year later. Now I think even if you launched the PlayStation 3 at the same time as the Xbox 360, even with its price, I think it would outsold the Xbox 360. There's an interesting debate to be had there. The reason I say that is because it came out a year later, but it's either outselling it now, or it's or it's neck and neck, and that was yeah. with a year lead for the Xbox. Yeah. Although you can't deny the Xbox 360 done very well because the Xbox One never sold anyone. The Xbox One, not the Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, one. the original <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. The original Xbox uh, never sold anywhere near what the 360 did. The 360. It was a brilliant sound console and it was a great console as well. I mean, I, I've still got one, I think, somewhere kicking about. And I, I do think it's a good console. There was some good games on it. I remember uh, getting, what was it, Elder Scrolls, was it Oblivion? Yeah, was it Oblivion? Yeah, I think it was Oblivion that came yeah. out around about the same time as the console did. And it was brilliant. I loved that game. <laughs> so good. Not as good as Skyrim, but it was so good. And I don't think it came out for PlayStation 3 for quite a while, Oblivion. It uh, did, though, didn't it, eventually? It did eventually. Sure. On yeah. Cameo, oh, my God. <clears throat> oh, Rare. When Rare were good. Oh, Cameo was... I think Cameo was a launch title, because I got that. Yeah, it was. It and was. obviously, I was so used to... Because, obviously, I had to wait a year for the PlayStation 3, so the, at the time, the Xbox 360 was the sort of next-generation console, and I was just playing Cameo and the graphics, and the, I was swimming underwater with Cameo. And like it, orchestral music was playing, and I was just like, "Oh wow, this is this is just the <laughs> best thing ever." Of, it was that I, I'll never forget that moment in time on my Xbox 360. That was my probably my favourite Xbox 360 moment, and it was like at launch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean there was some quite good Xbox 360 moments after that, like Crackdown and stuff like that. So this this I just wish I don't rate this rare game that's coming next. Sea of Pirates or whatever it's called. Not, I've not seen it. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Sea of Pirates or something like that. I don't know, but it just to me it just doesn't look that good. And everybody's well, rave, raving about it, and I'm looking at it thinking Rare's just finished. You never know. It might be great. Yeah, it might, it be. might be great. I hope so I would rather have Cameo Two though. So if they're listening, <laughs> get on it. Cameo Two. Although saying that, a lot of the talented Rare team of Weth now, the ones who would be more likely to make Cameo 2. In fact, I think they're at that Playtonic Games. Yeah, ones yeah. ones are making that ukulele. Yeah. So that looks like a good game. I'm looking forward to that. that <laughs> We've good. gone massively off track. <sighs> that's what I always do. <laughs> that's that's the whole yeah. point of this show. You kind of just Read talk it, a load you. of nonsense. <laughs> right. I'm going to try and stretch this out for five minutes. <laughs> so we get to the 30 minute mark. <laughs> And then realise you've not pressed record again. Yeah, I'm watching it this time. Don't worry, I'm not making that mistake yeah, yeah. again. No yes. way, no way. Okay, <laughs> hold on. I need to press my mute button, sing a song or something. Where I have a oh, cough. No. I haven't got a very good singing voice. I don't know what else to say. That's better. <laughs> That's better. Oh God, I've got a bit of a dodgy throat. 
That's because it's like eight o'clock on a Friday night. It's like, you know. Yeah, that doesn't help, does it? Okay. Right, I've got one question that isn't in to do with digital. Uh, well, it's sort of to do with digital, actually, online. It says, what kind of games do you buy digitally? Personally, I try and get all my 3DS and Vita games digitally for these of access, so I don't have to carry carts. Console games, I tend to go for RPGs and games I know I will spend a lot of time on, such as Yakuza 5, Xenoblade, and the Warrior games. That's from Turnip Lord. Uh, That's a good point, although I still still prefer my Vita games physical if I can. I just I love a box. I'm a designer at Shop 2, and I'm all for like nicely designed packaging and stuff, so... I'll always buy physical anyway. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, for me, the kind of games I download digitally are normally the indie ones that you can't buy physically. You know, mm. things like Volume, Thomas Was Alone, Transistor, yeah. Bastion. I like I like to buy games that I know I'll play a lot, so Uncharted Collection, uh, probably, what else? FIFA, games like FIFA or... Uh, uh, what was the other ones I got? Battlefront. I mean, yeah. it's just games I know. I'm, ones. The game, basically, games I know I'm going to play all the time, so I don't have to keep getting up and switching the disc over all the time. I oh, see that doesn't bother me switching a disc. It's yeah, like... but if I'm in bed and I'm playing Battlefront, and then I fancy a game of FIFA, it just saves me getting out of bed. Oh, no, so it's a bit lazy. lazy that's, but... like, that's like um, oh, what feel what Disney fit Wally. You know, you're going to be like sat on one of those cars one day, just no. flobbing around. But I'm not lazy. I work hard, so it's nice to just have a relax. So, so actually, I don't what have a, a disc. I don't have a lot of disc games up there. I've got loads of disc games. I say oh. that, but I do. I've got tons. I've got all these promos on the other shelf, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have tons, but I don't generally. It's just these, because I mean, having kids and stuff, like a. Uh, and just a busy life in general, sometimes you just don't get a lot of time to play games, so just yeah. to turn it on, push your button and it loads up is brilliant. Yeah. Sometimes if there's maintenance on a game or whatever, and i got to play it and there's maintenance, that'll be me. I won't play a game, I'll just turn the PlayStation off again and go, I forget it then. Mm. I, I won't, I won't uh, spend ages trying to mess around with it, I just want to be able to push your button and play and that's it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, true. So, um, I'm a sucker for a special edition as well, so I've got loads of special Oh, yeah, editions. I do have quite a few, actually. I do have quite a few. Uh, right, just one more bit of stuff to get through. Uh, the new releases. Actually, it's just this week's new releases. Uh, because we're recording this late, it's obviously a bit less relevant, but people might not know, so we'll just go over them. Wife is Strange, it's coming out at retail. Yep, uh, both limited got that. edition we've got that uh, there's an unboxing on our YouTube channel that I'll done uh, so check that out I like a bit at the end where he goes life is strange people <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen it but I maybe should have checked that out I um, just watch I got that last a copy and, it's funny yeah, it's a lovely <laughs> special edition though I really like it yeah, we've it given away the vinyls at the moment I don't know if we've given them away or not but they're really nice Yeah, there is a them. competition on the website yeah. we're giving them away I don't know if the competition I don't know when it ends. It kind of started yesterday, so I I don't really know when it ends. Uh, So check it out if it's still there. Then uh, maybe you can win a vinyl. Zombie, uh, that's out. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That's the Zombie U, the Wii U game. It's already out digitally as is Life is Strange, so you might have it already. If not, it's out at retail now. And finally, I've got Resident Evil Zero as well. Well, it's yeah. Resident Evil Origins collection, isn't it? Which has yeah. Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 0. Yeah, so you can grab that. Uh, yeah. All three of those games we've reviewed on the website, I believe. Life is Strange we actually reviewed in parts, but I kind of blended it all together with magic and put it all <laughs> into one big review as well. So that's on the website if you want to know a bit more about that game. Uh, we also reviewed this week The Banner Saga. I believe, uh, and and next week we've just got tons to review. Uh, Gravity Rush, uh, Sebo Rally, Final Fantasy Explorers, uh, and you need someone to send you a copy of Lego Marvel. Yeah, I need some send me a copy of Lego Marvel, please. Yeah, so we can review that. And we've also got we're going to try and do something on uh, the Tomorrow's Children beta if we get time. And obviously we've got the show, but first Dan, he's he's moving house next week, so 
I don't know when the show will be next week. <laughs> we'll do it when we can, and yeah. we'll try and get those reviews up when we can. There's a lot to do. Uh, it's that getting on good. a bit. I'm keeping second down from his from Chinese his EastEnders <laughs> Chinese whatever that is he wants to do. And my kids are probably driving my wife crackers as well. <laughs> Well, it's been nice to talk to everyone and tell them about the PlayStation VR. It'd be exciting. Um, for once more people get hands-on with it, I think it, uh, I think it's one of those things that the more people see it and talk about it, the, the more the buzz it build. Yeah. So it's yeah. something that you can't really put across in words or pictures. You yeah. need to... Yeah, it. you do need to try it for yourself, I think. That's yeah. right. Okay, that's it then. Uh, sorry it's been a bit of a shorter episode than usual, about half the length, but... Hey, at least we got a show this week, so <laughs> like I say, fair than nothing. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we'll let you know the topic. And uh, we'll try and get second down on again. Yes. First, that'll be good. First down and second down. And yeah, the two downs. James as well. It's all fun. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. You may say oh, bye. Or, are you looking at me as if you were going to stop recording here? Bye, everyone. See you later. I'm not going to stop recording. You say bye, that's good. I won't stop recording. Oh, boy. Bye. <laughs>